Hi there, welcome to Chem Camp. I'm Mrs. Newman and I've got an AP Chem multiple choice question dealing with photoelectron spectroscopy, or PEZ for short. Now this is a fairly new concept to a college board exam. In fact, when they switched over to a data-driven exam, they introduced this concept because it allows them to provide data about binding energy or ionization energy and connects it to the concept of electron configurations. And they love giving students data to have to analyze, draw conclusions from, and then answer a question. So let's learn a little chemistry. The problem reads, the photoelectron spectra above show the energy required to remove a 1s electron from a nitrogen atom and from an oxygen atom. Which of the following statements best accounts for the peak in the upper spectrum being to the right of the peak in the lower spectrum? Well, let's see what kind of information we can pull from these spectra. The very first thing I always take a look at is the x-axis, and I want to know what kind of energy they're listing. In this particular problem, they're listing binding energy, which happens to be the amount of energy required to attract or bind the electron to the nucleus of the atom. The opposite of this energy is ionization energy, which they could also list here if they chose to. However, ionization energy is the opposite. It's energy required to remove an electron from an atom. So the energies are usually equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So it's always important to note the higher end of the energy on that x-axis. So if you take a look on both those spectra, the energy runs from 700 electron volts down to 300, meaning that the further to the left you are, the higher in energy you are, and the further to the right, the lower the energy you have. The other piece of information we can pull from these spectrum is the amount of electrons involved, but that involves the y-axis. If you take a look there, the label is re relative number of electrons. What this means then is that the height of the peak given in the spectrum corresponds to the number of electrons located at that particular energy level and sublevel. So the problem tells us that both of these peaks correspond to the first energy level and the S sublevel. Well, if you know anything about that S sublevel, it can hold a maximum of two electrons. And since they're both the same height in both these spectra, we can assume that these are the 1s2 electrons. Now, if the height of those peaks were half the height, that's listed there, then it would correspond to just one electron. Now essentially here, if we take a look, that 1s2 peak in the nitrogen atom is just above 400 electron volts. And it's further to the right, meaning that it's actually lower in energy compared to that oxygen atom. If it's lower in energy, it's less attracted to that nucleus of that atom. And vice versa, the 1s2 in the oxygen atom is at about 650 electron volts. So that's a little higher in energy. So those 1s2 electrons in the oxygen atom is, are more attracted to that nucleus. So the big question becomes why? What exactly is the difference between the nucleus of a nitrogen atom and the nucleus of an oxygen atom? The protons. Thank <laughs> you. 
your oxygen atom has an atomic number of eight, while your nitrogen atom has an atomic number of seven, meaning that oxygen atom has one additional proton in its nucleus. Therefore, it's said that oxygen has a greater effective nuclear charge. A great vocab word to know for the college board exam. And again, that's just a fancy phrase for stating it has more protons in its nucleus. Because it has that additional proton, it has the ability to attract or pull those 1s2 electrons in closer to the nucleus. The term the College Board likes using is it'll have greater Coulombic attractions. So let's take a look at our options they give us and see if we can select an answer. In letter A, they say nitrogen atoms have a half-filled P sublevel. Well, this is true. If you were to draw out the orbital notation for a nitrogen atom, in the 2p sublevel, you would have three individual electrons sp spread out across the three individual orbitals of the p sublevel. However, this isn't going to affect how attracted those 1s electrons are to the nucleus of the atom. Letter B states, there are more electron-electron repulsions in oxygen atoms than in nitrogen atoms. Again, a true statement. They like giving true statements because it's more difficult to pick out a correct answer. However, the electron repulsions that are greater in the oxygen atom again occur in that 2p sublevel when you have one pair of those electrons having to share the same orbital. Again, that's not going to affect the 1s electrons in the oxygen atom and how attracted they are to the nucleus. In letter C, it states electrons in the P subshell of oxygen atoms provide more shielding than the electrons in the P subshell of the nitrogen atoms. Well, really, the electrons that provide shielding in an atom, they're the core electrons, the inner electrons, which happen to be the 1s's in this case. So this is also not an option. Finally, in letter D, they state nitrogen atoms have a smaller nuclear charge, they left out effective, than the oxygen atoms. Well, this is true. Since that nitrogen atom has one less proton, it has a smaller effective nuclear charge, and it's not going to be able to attract those electrons as tightly to that nucleus. So letter D is your answer. I hope this helps you prepare, prepare for the May exam. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If not, continue to follow along for more AP Chem content. Be well.